Uh, let's talk about the nanostructure materials and how we are using these materials and advanced electronic devices. From advanced electronic devices, I mean sensors, I mean catalysis, I mean solar cell, I mean lithium-ion batteries, I mean supercapacitor, I mean medical purposes, I mean uh, for water filtrations. In all these electronic devices, we require nanostructure material. These materials change the paradigm of electronic devices. So there are many parameters which are important, but two are the key parameters for any nanostructure materials. If you want to choose a nanostructure material for your study, so you need to look for these two parameters. The first one is high specific surface area. I use the word specific because when you take one gram of any nanomaterial and you see that when you cover it, and, and, and the ground and you see that how many meters square area it cover. So if, if you take graphene and if you take uh, titania, so graphene has a high surface area. So this means that one gram of graphene will uh, cover large area as compared to titania. So this means that graphene is superior in terms of high specific surface area. Why I mention specific surface area? because when you have large specific surface area you have more reaction sites so you have more chances for electrons to interact or to generate right the second one is faster electron transport once you generate electrons now you need to take those electrons from one point to another point so we need a path the path which transport our electrons faster and there is a minimum chances of recombinations, right? So basically nanostructure material we divide into many types according to their size, right? Or morphology means shape, right? If it is uh, one dimension, so we call one dimension. If it look like a dot or if it look like a rod, so we say that it is one dimension. If you look like a particle, nanoparticle, it's a zero dimension. So let's do into uh, detail. So available nanoparticles, the first one is nanoparticle. So nanoparticle means it is we call zero dimension because you know nano, people sometimes define nano that it is when it is below 100 nanometer. So you call uh, that uh, uh, nanostructure material. Sometimes people say that when it is below 1000 nanometer, so it is called, uh, when it is below 100,000 nanometer, so you call this nano, nano material. Right? There are different definitions. Why I call zero dimension? Here, if you look these particles, so you see the, 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 the scale is 100 nanometer here, a scale. So it means that the particle are just like dot, dot mean. So dot mean, dimension mean when you measure something, when you measure the length or volume or the area of something. So if it is a dot, so this means that it has zero x axis and zero y axis and zero z x axis. So this means you cannot measure the size of this dot in any direction. This is why I call this uh, zero dimension, d for dimension, right? So look this, uh, the, the property. The zero dimension nanoparticle have very high surface area. I uh, am pretty sure that you know that when we decrease the size, we increase the surface area. The best example is if you take spoon of sugar, in one case when the sugar is small, in the other case when the sugar is large. When, when, which spoon will dissolve faster? The spoon which contains smaller sugar particle because the smaller sugar particle have more surface area. This means that the smaller sugar particle have more chances for reaction, right? But it has a problem, slow electron transport because there is a chances of recombination. Electron jump from one particle to another and another. So there are holes, there is a recombination chances. So this is why the net flow is slow in zero dimension particle. Let's move to the second one. This is one dimension such as nano rod or vertical nano rod. And the look at the property basically, uh, this is also nanofibers you see here it has a very low surface area why because you see here uh, in most of the cases 
uh, the, the if you take if you cut this uh, fiber into many pieces, pieces, pieces this means that you expose the, the cross section per reaction but in this case the cross section are hide it is hidden so you cannot uh, make the the cross section uh, react you so this means that it is a very very low surface area right but it has a one advantage it is a faster electron transport for instance uh, it is not like this but we just suppose that when electrons start from here so there is less chances of recombinations as compared to the zero dimension so this is one dimension let me clarify this why it is called one dimension if somebody asks this question that uh, uh, we have uh, this wire for instance uh, it is here it is cut here this wire so this wire if this is x axis right this wire has also some height but that for example y is very very less than x x is mean the long side is x and if you are talking about it has also z so that z is also very very less than x and we ignore it this is why we call it one dimension and another important thing is the x axis is very large very very large as compared to the other two dimension this is why we term it one dimension right the third one is hierarchical or we call three dimensions right if if everything is uh, 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 extending at the same way like x y and z so that we call three dimension like we call hierarchical like cauliflower shape if you have a cauliflower a shape that we call uh, uh, three dimension hierarchical so look here a low electron transport because again there is a problem not straight path but higher surface than this one because comparatively it has, has more surface area as compared to the uh, uh, one dimension right this one you can uh, the, 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 this is again if you say this is the, the, the one dimension is three dimension look this is the x axis for instance and this is the y axis for instance and this is the z axis but you look why uh, these two axes it is very very small as compared to this is why it it cannot be put in three dimension it can be put in one dimension right so this is the uh, available uh, nano material let make it very clarify you can see this is a nano particle very clearly you can see here this is nano particles right and this is one dimension this is zero dimension and this is hierarchical three dimensions it has a moderate surface area low electron transport it has a very low surface area past electron transport this is vertical nano rods you see here it is vertical nano rods and it has a very very high surface area but very low electron transport thanks for watching